Given your storied <laughs> career, your, your many days spent in space, how significant is this inspiration for mission in the span of space history? Oh, I think it's, it's incredible. It's groundbreaking, and we were so excited here at Sierra Space to watch. We all watched live here in the office last night as they as they launched on this uh, great mission. So, you know, what's good for SpaceX is good for the rest of the commercial space industry. It's certainly good for us. Um, we, of course, believe in a lot of competition, so we're also vying to do, to get some of that business as well. But it, you know, it does not detract from what SpaceX has done in this historic flight. Now, they're not just trying to get a good view up there. The crew is performing experiments and research while they're in orbit. What is potentially so valuable about that? I mean, speak to the folks who you know, don't understand why we're investing all of this time and money in space. Okay. Well, there, a lot of different kind of research is very applicable to life here on the ground. So we talked a lot about how viruses grow or, or how, say, uh, cancer cells grow in space. They grow differently in microgravity than they do on the ground. They can grow larger. We can study them better, and we can learn how to make uh, medicines that will attack those particular types of cells. Uh, we can learn how to print, believe it or not, print organs in space, human organs, so that, you know, preferably we do, would not have to die, wait for someone to die to get a human organ. We can just print them in space, bring them back, and then be into the people who need them. Who failed. So there's a lot of different potential are using research today to make a business for tomorrow so that companies like ours can build uh, a space station that can that can house this kind of research, bring people back and forth to those. You've been to space, of course, multiple times, 33 days in space that you've spent, I believe. Talk to us about the toll that trip, that kind of travel takes on your body, um, what the astronauts will experience on the way down and once they return. Great. So on short missions, it's not all that difficult. There are some short-term effects uh, when you first get to microgravity. A lot of the fluids in the lower half of your body and your legs and lower torso kind of equilibrate through your body and you'll feel pressure in your head, behind your eyeballs, uh, from that fluid shift. Uh, over a couple, three days, that, that re, you, know, you lose that body mass, that liquid, and then you feel pretty normal again. The other thing that can happen right away is some people get something called space, space sickness, which is similar to sea sickness, and it usually lasts a day or two as well. Um, that's why I'm an advocate of being able to stay a little bit longer in space, because you, by the time you adapt to microgravity, you really start having a good time and uh, really enjoying the view and enjoying what you're doing up there. Um, and then, uh, then when you come back, You'll have to readjust. Your body has to re, um, re-put the fluids up in your head again uh, so that you won't pass out when you come back to the ground um, and, and you don't have that, that nausea anymore. So um, it's, it'll be a little bit different for them. They'll have to come down under parachutes so they'll feel that shock. They'll have the splashdown in the water so they'll have that impact. And then they'll wait out there a little while until they're rescued um, by the, the ship. Um, so it's a, a little bit different environment than what I'm used to. Uh, coming down in the space shuttle, all my flights from the space shuttle. Meantime, your current company, Sierra, is working to pioneer a low Earth orbit economy. Paint the vision for us and the timeline. Right. So that um, vision is to have a space station that we talked about earlier that could house people, uh, people who would want to just go for the experience. So imagine a hotel in space. Uh, we could house people who want to do basic research, the scientists. And we could also manufacture just manufacturing facilities. We could have some of these habitats be able to produce uh, produce those organs that we were just talking about, and then deliver those back down to the Earth. We also use a space plane, and you can see those behind me up there that will come back and land on a runway, so we can bring people back rather than you know splashing into the ocean or landing under parachutes on the ground. We can bring them back to a runway, much like the shuttle did although we'll have more flexibility in that we have safer fuels that don't require fans and, and isolation for people when they first come back. We also provide a more smooth landing so we glide in like a commercial aircraft and then anything that's delicate, any of those organs or those um, any other kind of protein crystal growth or other things that we built up in space that is fragile, we can bring that down to the earth and, and then disseminate it um, based on the customers that we have. 